for many years, photographers here either sat at center ice where there was no glass, or they sat in corners. And there was really no set standard from arena to arena as to where the holes would be, or how many holes, or the size of holes. Some were square, some were up here, some came off the dasher. And then at some point, the NHL decided that they needed to have control for the player's safety. They needed to have some control over the size of the holes and the placement. So they commissioned a study, and what they decided was that there would be a maximum of eight holes in the glass, and no more than three in each corner of the, uh, of the arena. So you couldn't really have three, 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 and three. It was a total of eight maximum, with a maximum of three in each corner. And there's also a set guideline in terms of where each one, where you're pin permitted to put each one. Um, there's one in this segment of the ice right here, near the goalie's line. So where the goalie's line intersects the boards, it can be no more than five feet back from where the goalie's line hits the boards to where the hole is placed. That would be hole number one. The second hole, can be around the face-off circle, the bottom of the face-off circle, and the third hole further up the boards near the top of the face-off circle. Obviously for me, I, I always prefer what this hole, which would be called the deeper hole. It's a better view of the entire ice surface. Good. But mm -hmm. those, yeah, but those three in a corner need the separation to be in each of the three segments. You can't have one right next to the other. Uh -huh. You would need one, you know, one could be around the goalie's line, one at approximately the bottom of the face-off circle, and one near the top of the face-off circle. Yeah, that's usually what they use them for. Uh, the empty uh, panes of glass, the TV guys like to be in the corners as well. This provides them with some space. It also minimizes how many holes are close to each other. Um, they just thought it was better that way to minimize how many holes and, mm -hmm. and you know, what panes of glass they need to worry about. It's uh, basically we call that dasher cam, and normally those holes are placed uh, where, the goal, where the line behind the goalie's net intersects the boards. So just in rough numbers, from the goal post, out about six or eight feet, whatever meters that might be, and then straight to the boards, so that when the hole is placed down low, you've got a view looking up at the players coming in um, you know, coming in on the net. Mm -hmm. And in some arenas, what they do is the rink board is replaced by a piece of plexiglass, sort of like this stuff. And what they do is they put the decal over it, you know, the advertising or white on the, on the uh, rink side, and you don't know whether it's plexiglass or just plastic, and then all they need to do is cut a hole out of the plastic, sorry, cut a hole out of the, uh, out of the plastic coating and you'll be able to shoot right through the plexi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's done in a few arenas, not that many around the league, because in most of the NHL arenas, the seats come right down, down to the glass. It makes it more difficult to find a place where you can actually put in a dasher cap. Mm -hmm. This cute little thing that someone invented uh, is the hole cover. And basically what they do is, it's mandatory in the National Hockey League that when you get up from your photo position, put the whole cover back into place to protect the fans and the ushers and everyone around. Uh, it takes you a little while to get used to it, but after you've done it a couple of times, you can take it out and put it in pretty cleanly and quickly. And that's in there pretty solidly. The other thing I wanted to point out though on the hole is all these edges are beveled. They're all rounded to protect players. Now occasionally you'll have a puck come through, not that often, or an elbow will stick through, usually from that side, not from my side. But these are all soft, clean edges, and that's really important. Every arena cuts the holes. This stuff um, is some sort of plastic, plexiglass of some sort. I don't know the exact name of it. Um, in some arenas, some in Europe, use Herculite or glass. When they do that, that has to be formed at the factory because as soon as you hit the Herculite with a drill, it shatters. But this stuff, you can cut right into. I'm sure they have a template that they need to, you know, to make sure the holes are the exact dimensions. 
I believe that the holes are four and a, four and a half inches high by five and a half inches wide. Um, and I'm sure the NHL must supply them with a, a diagram specification not only for the hole, but for making these cute little things to fit in the holes. Usually these little things, these little tail ends, are made so that in most arenas they can fasten it to the boards oh. so they don't lose the holes. In, you know, in some arenas what they do is they come around at the end of the game and they collect these and put them in the back to keep them safe. Oh, but what happens also with hockey players being hockey players, if you leave an exposed hole like this in the morning skate, then the players try to shoot the puck through the hole and if you hit it just right, you'll break the pane of glass. Uh -huh. and that happens. Uh, usually, usually that happens in practice more than it happens in games. You come in and a pane of glass has been broken at the morning skate. It's very inviting.